Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Upgrades. I'm Jeremy Knoll. And I'm John Suarez. And today we are going to be talking about the Party Time deck from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. And this deck is headed up by Nalia de Arnis. This is a black-white deck. And yeah, it's about the party mechanic, which was originally in Zendikar Rising, which is the pre-Dungeons and Dragons magic set. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons set. It was really kind of like trying to be a D&D adventuring, yeah. you know. They were trying to make fetch yeah, happen. They were trying to make it happen. They, they were, it was like Indiana Jones, a whole thing, you know. It was it was fun. But um, but yeah, the set was kind of uh, okay, and it had the party mechanic. And um, so there are some cards that we're going to talk about putting into the deck that may be from that set that really care about this. But I think they did a little bit better of a job on this one. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm upset that... Uh, Zendikar Rising cards did not really get to shine mm -hmm. because I expected with AFR and and now this to, you know, have something a little bit more coherent. Yeah. But uh, this set definitely has better party cards than the other ones, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, but just going over quick stats for this deck, there are forty four creatures in the deck, so you know it's all about fighting. It's all about those creatures and those creature types. Three instants. Five sorceries, seven artifacts, three enchantments, and 37 lands mm. in the whole deck. So, just like the other uh, decks, there are 10 new cards total. Uh, Nalia Darnis is the face commander of the deck. It's a one black white, three three human rogue. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, and Wizard spells, the party spells, from the top of your library. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain death touch until end of turn. Mm -hmm. I like this deck. I like the name. We were talking about that other deck's name that I really don't like. We're probably going to get to later. Yeah. I really like Party Time. <laughs> party Time. For this. Is, it's a good name it for is. the, it's for a good the one. deck. It's a good one. Uh, so it does also have, just like the other commander decks in this set, a creature that can choose a background and a new background that are not from the main set. Why don't you go over those for us? Yeah, so you have uh, Brockus Party Leader. This is an orc, even though it's not an orc. Uh, legendary orc, three mana, three colors, and a black, two, four. Uh, this is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard, so it counts basically towards any part yep. of your party. Uh, it does not make you have does not make a, you have a party. full party, which is a thing that happened in Zendikar Rising quite a bit. Correct. It does count as one of those four as far as counting a full party. Yes. Goes, and then whenever it attacks, the defending player loses X life, or X, and you create X treasure tokens where X is the number of creatures in your party. It also has to choose a background. And for this deck, the background is Folk Hero, two calls and a white legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have whenever you cast a spell that shares a creature type with this creature, Draw a card, and it only triggers once per turn. Which is pretty good. I know that a lot of people have been saying, you know, like, when's white going to get more card draw? And they have the conditional card draw with stuff like it that. It is always conditional, but this card's good. However, another card, another thing that people have been asking for in white is also on a card in this set, which, honestly, in this in this deck, which, honestly, this deck is probably one of the best one, if not the best one, as far as, like, the new cards go. Yes. And this is one of them, is Deep Known Terramancer. It's a 2-2 for one and a white. It has flash. It's a gnome wizard. And it says, Mold Earth, whenever one or more lands enter the battlefield under an opponent's control without being played, you may search your library for a planes card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Do this only once each turn. Yeah. The card's good. Uh, it's probably going to be a player in some eternal formats. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it doesn't get basic planes, they finally, yeah. finally, planes card. planes card, so you can go get Utility planes. Yeah, you can go get If your, you want to go get your Missville planes. Yeah. You can go get your um, or you can go lands. get your dual lands. You can go your shock lands. Shock yeah. lands. Your you get a triome. Triomes, yeah. I was gonna say a couple the, different things. The ones that come that have the, the types that come into play tap that yep. have cycling or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot. But yeah, the fact that this is a two mana and mm -hmm. it means you can just hold it and then somebody plays cultivate or Kadama's reach on three. Guess yeah. what? I'm also ramping. I when I first saw this card, I thought it had the word instead, and I was like, "Oh boy!" <laughs> if instead of them going to do that, <laughs> I get to go do that, that ain't okay. This is not going to work out. Uh, uh, <laughs> so that one's really good. Yeah. So the next card we have, absolutely love the art on this card. I think of Eagly every time I see it, and that is a uh, Harper Recruiter, three mana, two one, two and a white. It's a human warrior, three one flying. Whenever it attacks, look at the top four cards of your library. You can reveal a cleric, rogue, wizard, or warrior card from among them, and or yeah. From among them, and uh, put those cards into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom in the library in the in a random order. Yep. More more digging. And or and or, 
and put you, you and or yeah you can get up to four up cards, to four just cards. Just into your hand. That's pretty good. Really good. Seasoned Dungeoneer is a three four for three and a white. Enters the battlefield. Take the initiative. Whenever you attack, target attacking cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard gains protection from creatures until end of turn, mm -hmm. and it explores. Oh, I didn't so even read that. That's yeah. that secret explore at the yeah, end. Okay. It's, it's, that's yeah, secret explore at the <laughs> end, except for the giant thing of text. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a brand new wrath for parties, which is stick together. Three calls white, white sorcery. Each player chooses a party from among the creatures they control and then sacrifices the rest. Yeah, another five mana wrath. That's yeah. conditional. That's just yeah. kind of a thing. And then you got this broken card. Yeah, this is the one that uh, uh, the other one that I think a lot of people are gonna like. This one is a Black Market Connections, two and a Black Enchantment. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, choose one or more. Create a treasure token, you lose life. Draw a card, you lose two life. Create a 3-2 colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling, you lose three life. And I can tell you, I played against, the, this This may or may not be up on the Star City Games website at the at the YouTube channel at the moment. We played a game at Command Fest Richmond, and the person playing this deck chose six life every time, yeah, which, they, is, which they, is the correct choice. Yes, they understand how to play with Sylvan they, Libraries. They were at 10 and chose 6, six. which still makes sense. Yep. And it was it's just absurdly good. Yeah, this card is very, very good. Getting to choose or more is, mm -hmm. is pretty good. Uh, even if it wasn't choose or more, this card would still be good. Yeah. And getting them all is, is very obnoxious. So. Yeah. Uh, we have Solemn Doom Guide, 3 colors, black, black, uh, flying four five. Each creature in your graveyard that's a cleric, rogue, warrior, and or wizard has unearth two. One in a black. Yeah. I like that it's just unearth two. That's nice. Yeah. Instead of like unearth for its Unless mana, mana cost. Yeah, because that would be not as good. Multi classic class bardic is an equipment for one mm -hmm. and it equips for two. A equipped creature has lifelink if you control a cleric. Death Touch if you control a rogue, haste if you control a warrior, and flying if you control a wizard. As long as you have a full party, prevent all damage that would be dealt to equipped creature. Yeah. This one, I think, has a lot of really good flavor as far as the D&D side of things go. Just, it, it's it's super cool. Lifelink with a Claire, you know, all, all the different abilities with the specific classes just work out really, really well mm -hmm. for D&D. Um, so, yeah, now we're going to go through a couple of new cards that we would suggest to add into the deck as well as a couple of cards that we would suggest taking from the deck. And this one, uh, most of the cards are going to be, I think all of them are under $10 that we have here. Well, thanks to a reprint. Yeah, thanks to a reprint. But <laughs> uh, yeah, that one that one would have been much, much more until, until it was reprinted. But yeah, we'll go over that one first. Sure. So we have uh, the reprinted Blade of Selves. Mm -hmm. uh, two mana equipment, equipped creature has myriad, and the cups for four. Yeah. Uh, this card is very... It's always been powerful. It's been powerful since the first time it was printed. This is its first printing, no, our first reprint, reprint, and its first foil printing. Yeah. So, and you get the variant art as well. So yeah, the very very sweet card. Super good card, and it's yeah, it's like eight dollars with the reprint. If you get the regular, non yeah, just the regular and non, yeah. non alternate, non foil, you know. But still, it's it was original. It was like a thirty dollar card before. Yes. Something ridiculous like that. So, uh, another one that <laughs> I like this as a little trick. Uh, Shields of Veilus Veil. It's from uh, the Lorwyn block. It has Changeling. That's a tribal instant shapeshifter. It has Changeling. And creatures target player controls get plus O plus one and gain all creature types until end of turn. So if you really need to, you know, make your party full for some reason, it's a good way to do it. And you also have, like, the things that let you have, you know, indestructible, like the the um, the equipment we just talked about, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So Here's a number of cute tricks you can do in yeah. there. Uh, so next card we have is a uh, is become a black staple in Commander since it's printing basically, and that is Dothy Void Voidwalker, mm -hmm. black black three two Dothy Rogue, being nice. Yeah, it's got the Rogue creature type has Shadow. If a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a Void counter, uh, and then you could tap it, sacrifice it to choose a card exiled uh, that an opponent owns with a Void counter on it. And you can play it this turn without paying its mana cost. I love playing other people's cards. I. Don't mind it. What I like about this card is that if somebody else has Dothy Voidworker, I can get those cards too. Yeah. That I like. Yeah. I think this is a really sweet design and is and no surprise it's become somewhat of a commander staple. Yeah, and it's a it's a commander staple from uh Modern Horizons. Modern Horizons 2. Mm -hmm. And so it was a modern focused set, but it's still like relatively inexpensive. Yep. Yeah, it's only like seven, eight dollar card, so. Uh, the next one is Deadly Alliance, and this is from, as we said before, the uh, Zendikar Rising. And this cares about your party. It's four and a black, instant, common. The spell costs one less for each uh, creature in your party, and destroy target creature or planeswalker. So it could be a one mana instant destroy target creature or planeswalker. 
Not if, you, lie. if you have the full party. Never seen that card before. No. Seems sweet, though. I mean, yeah. in this deck, one mana destroy a creature. Yeah, it's going to be reasonable. really relevant in this deck, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and the next card we have is also from Zendikar, Rising. And this is a Mythic Rare. It's three calls, white, white, Angel of Destiny. It is a 2-6 flying double striker. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each gain that much life. At the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, each player... Angel of Destiny attacked this turn loses the game. I know you like the. I love lose, loses the game. Loses I love game. wins the game. I like this is a cleric. Yeah, the, the cleric is the big part of this one. I think yeah. the flying double strike two six for five is also just yeah, you know, just like, gaining a bunch yeah, of life, gaining, gaining life. Uh, the next one is another one from Zendikar Rising Coveted Prize. This one's the rare. It's the four and a black spell. Costs one less for each uh, creature. Uh, Creature in your party. Mm -hmm. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, shuffle your library. If you have a full party, you can cast a spell with converted mana cost four or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. I think this is very much like the staple card for a party deck, the staple spell for a party deck. Yeah, the more I've played Commander, the more I've realized I don't want the but generic best tutor. Yeah. And I want the generic best tutor from my specific deck. For that deck. Um, you don't necessarily just want demonic tutor every single yeah. time. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. You want imperial seal in your deck <laughs> instead of demonic tutor. Because yeah. sometimes that's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And coveted prize. Great for this. And then it has the, you know, play something that's four CMC or mm -hmm. less. Yeah. Uh, we've got Null Priest of the Oblivion. Two colors, or excuse me, two mana colors and a black 2-1. This is a Vampire Cleric, so it still has the, the, the party creature type. Uh, it has Kicker of three colors and a black. Menace and Lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you get to uh, return a creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. And the, the Cleric added on to it. So you can make, you know, a small creature for yeah. first order. It's still small creature, but... It's also part of your party. You yeah. need those creatures to yeah. make sure you get there. Another... Part another card that's part of your party that's uh, more recent that I'm I'm really liking is Nil's Discipline Enforcer. So two two for two and a white human cleric. At the beginning of your end step, for each player, put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature that player controls. Each creature with one or more counters on it can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless its controller pays X, where X is the number of counters on that creature. So yep. it works really well for the plus one plus one counters. It works really well if you know you're playing against the other deck that gives everything like a, a, a double first strike counter, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. You know those those kind of counters also counts. Yep. So the next card we have is is more of a uh, budget kind of pearl medallion because mm -hmm. that's really what we're using it for here. It's three colors. This is a Ketra's Monument, legendary artifact. Uh, white creatures spells you can you cast cost one less. Which is really the effect we're looking for here. But it also just, whenever you cast a creature spell, you make a 1-1 one, one white warrior with vigilance. Mm -hmm. Another warrior is not going to counter your party, but it can gum up the ground, can yeah. block the ground. It's also, like I said, just that kind of pearl medallion effect. Just Because most of your creatures are going to have, are going to be white, probably. No, it doesn't count. Yeah, it's a warrior is part of it. Cleric, wizard. Oh, warrior. yeah, it is warrior. Yeah. Okay, yep, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. See, I'm not yeah. a D&D &D person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, For some reason, know. I was just thinking everything but warrior. No, no, no. It's okay. Cleric, yeah. wizard, warrior, and... Well, that uh, card's even better than yeah, I thought. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I love a catcher's monument. I'm a big fan of being able to uh, play like a score, core skyfisher and just keep yeah, bouncing it and just keep doing great. it. Yeah. I make a bunch of one ones, so it's even better that it adds to your party. Yeah. And the last one is one that actually just came out with uh, Streets of New Capenna, and it's in the New Capenna Commander decks, and that is Life Insurance. It's an enchantment for three black, white, and it has extort. And whenever a non token creature dies, you lose one life and create a treasure token. You have a ton of creatures in this deck that are non tokens. Uh, you are going to be losing life, but you're going to make in that extra treasure. And mm -hmm. it's also just, it's an enchantment that just has extort on it. It also has sweet art. I would consider playing this card if it was just cheap enough just to have him play and looking at it. <laughs> I love the art on this. <laughs> yeah. It looks great. It's super sweet. Um, all right. So now a few cards that we would suggest taking out. Again, we're not going to be taking out all cards to, sub to substitute for the cards that we suggest to put it in, but just a few to suggest maybe taking out of the deck. Uh, yeah, we have Thwart the Grave. This card costs too much. Uh, even if you have the full party, I don't think its effect is, is good enough. That's sorcery. It costs one less for each uh, creature in your party. And then you can return a creature card and up to one target cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard from your graveyard back to the battlefield. Like, I guess if you have full party, it can do the double reanimate thing. Yeah. Which is fine. Which is fine. So, like, part of the problem is that you're you're going to be playing something like this to try and, you know, 
come back after a wrath or whatever. Yes. And it, is it really worth it to be paying six to reanimate? Exactly. Like, you know, two of the creatures that are probably not going to be, you know, they're, they're going to be like medium-sized creatures mm -hmm. with like an okay effect because they're party. I don't think you're going to often, like, maybe you're going to block early and then eventually you're going to be able to pay two to get two creatures back, you know? But eh, it's just kind of a maybe. So. Yeah. Like, uh, the next one is Valiant Changeling, and again, this is another one that reduces, um, it, it's a 5 white white for a 3-3 three, three Changeling Double Strike, it does have Double Strike, but it costs one last for each creature type among creatures you control. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana this spell costs by more than 5, so it's just going to be a white white. Yep. Um, and it's it's fine, it's a 3-3 three, three Double Strike that could potentially just cost 2, you know? Yep. But it's, it's whatever, you know. Um, one of the other cards we cut, which I think we do have to be careful about and noting because you're cutting wizards, it, which yes. are harder, to, harder to, to find in these colors. So you have to be careful with that. But I agree this card isn't probably good enough. And that's Magus of the Balance. This is just two uh, colors and a white for balance. You pay five and tap and sacrifice it. Uh, and then you, you cast Balance. Yeah. Uh, balance is an insanely powerful effect. Yep. It's not that insane if it costs seven and, and it took a turn to activate it. Yeah, it, so. it, it's it can be, and it's also just one of those that can be a little bit lower on the list of like social things that you want to be. Yeah. You, you, you generally don't want to mess with people's lands. Um, and this one I get, you know, trying to take out the people who are ramping a bunch because mm -hmm. you're in black white, so you're not going to be ramping as much. So you're going to take out their lands, you're going to take out all the creatures, yeah. you know, you're, you're probably going to be the one with the most creatures unless somebody's playing a token deck. Um, so yeah, there's there's a reason I could see this deck, this card being in the deck, but yeah, it's... Yeah. It's, it's more of being a wizard than anything, probably. It really is more of a wizard than anything else. You can probably find another wizard in black that would substitute pretty well for it, so... Uh, but yeah, so that is the full party time deck upgrade that we would suggest. Please let us know what cards you would add to the deck in the comments below. Uh, and make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, binge, and hit that bell to get notified of all of our new content. For Jonathan Suarez, I am Jeremy Knoll, and we will see you next time.